Hi everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're going to be solving an equation with complex numbers, a rational equation. So we have Z divided by Z plus I equals I. Can we find a number such that when it's divided by the same number plus I, then we get I. Okay, let's find out. So to be able to solve this equation, there's definitely a lot of different ways to do it. I'll be presenting at least two methods, okay? And let's start with the first one. So the first method is, can I use kind of partial fractions to split it up into two pieces so that I can work with it easily? Here's what you can do. You can kind of manipulate the top. You can manipulate expressions, but don't manipulate people. You can add i and subtract i from it, right? That would give you i back, but when you split it up, it's gonna work like this. This is gonna give you one, and one minus i over z plus i equals i. How is that gonna help me? Like you might be questioning, right? How? Why would you do that? Because my goal is to get to z, and I kind of isolated it. I only have z in one of the terms, and I can put it on one side and try to isolate it again by using cross multiplication, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and switch sides here. I mean, when you have something like a minus b equals c, it's equivalent to a minus c equals b. So these two can interchange, right? You probably know that, hopefully. So we get 1 minus i equals i over z plus i. Now is a good time to cross multiply, but don't distribute. Because if you distribute, you're going to go back to square one. You don't want to do that. So z plus i times 1 minus i equals i. By the way, Instead of cross multiplying, you could also do crisscross applesauce because you could switch these around because they are multiplied. Again, if you have a equals b over c, that also means c equals b over a. Of course, they shouldn't be zero, so on and so forth. Some limitations. But you get the idea, hopefully. And from here, again, using my shortcut, we can write this as z plus i equals i over 1 minus i. So we're very close to the solution. I know we kind of took a meandering approach kind of like a roundabout way to do it, but that's the purpose, I mean, not to torture you, but uh, showing you alternative methods. And usually, when you look uh, to a problem, look at a problem uh, through different lenses, the, through different methods, it'll teach you different things. So that's my understanding, or at least my idea. I know some people disagree, they're like, okay, I can do this in 30 seconds, that's not the point. Okay, I mean, I mean if you can solve it in 30 seconds, that will be a short, right? Anyways, so now we're almost there. What we need to do is subtract i from both sides. We can do that or we can take care of the right hand side first, make it a little better and then subtract i. I'll do the second, the latter, is that called the latter? So I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 1 plus i first to uh, realize the denominator. I don't know if they call it realize, it's not rationalized, but I just want to make the denominator real. So now, if you distribute, you're going to get i plus i squared. And from the product of two conjugates, we get sum of two squares, a squared plus b squared. Remember that formula or identity? That gives us 1 plus 1, which is 2. Easy, right? And this is still z plus i. And now i squared is negative 1. So I can kind of write it as z plus i equals i minus 1 over 2. Now is a good time to subtract i from both sides. Make sense? Now we're going to go ahead and make a common denominator, i minus 1 minus 2i divided by 2. That gives us negative i, but I want to write the real part first, negative 1 minus i divided by 2. You can definitely write this as negative 1 half minus 1 half of i if you want to really write it in standard form. But that's what it is, and looks like we have a single solution, right, if you didn't make any mistakes. So that's the first method. Did I call it first? Yes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, and we could possibly, possibly talk about a third method maybe, or you're going to let me know if you do find one, right? So for the second method, here's what we're going to do. First of all, we have z over z plus i equals i. So I think the third method could probably be replacing z with a plus b i, and then using the cross product and so on and so forth, right? And we could definitely give it a try. But let's go ahead and go with this first. Uh, I mean second, but next, whatever. <laughs> okay, so cross multiply z equals zi plus i squared. 
and then i squared is negative 1, so z equals zi minus 1. And since I'm trying to solve for z, let's subtract zi from both sides. If you don't want to leave the negative 1 alone, you can subtract z from both sides and add 1. Uh, kind of like the same idea. But I like to keep it here because this gives me a nice complex number. Anyways, that's z. I can factor out a z, and now I'm one step away from finding the z. All I have to do is divide both sides by 1 minus i, and that's going to give me negative 1 divided by 1 minus i. Does that look familiar? Negative 1 divided by 1 minus i, well, pretty close, right? Something like that. Anyways, so let's go ahead and multiply by the conjugates again. 1 plus i, 1 plus i, and then the numerator is going to be negative 1 minus i, and the denominator is going to be 2 again, and this gives us negative 1 half plus I don't know why I put a plus sign. Some people write it as plus minus negative one half, but I'll just write it as minus one half of i. Okay, cool. So that's our number. And what happens, let's just quickly explore. We don't have to finish it up, but just as an alternative, what would happen if you replace z with a plus bi? You would get a plus bi and then a plus bi plus i equals i. And then I can kind of write it like this. Look, I don't have to do cross multiplication, but then it will kind of look like the second method with a little bit of extra. So I want to do this instead. I want to write this as a plus b plus 1i, put the imaginary parts together, and then use the conjugate because, look, this is more fun, isn't it? I don't even know what a and b are, but I do know that the conjugate would be a minus b plus 1i, and of course I have to do it in the numerator too. Now, when I distribute, obviously, this is going to be pretty hectic, but let's do it. a squared minus a times b plus 1i, and then plus a b i, and then i times i is negative 1, and then that's going to negate the negative, and we're going to get b times b plus 1. And all of that is divided by a squared plus b plus 1 squared. Remember, this was sum of 2 squared at the bottom. So yes, I think this will qualify as a third method because it is different. Don't you think? Okay, now we're going to put these together, a squared plus b squared plus 1, and then put also these two together, a, b. By the way, if you put uh, simplify this, a, b minus a, b minus a, not 1. That's an a because we distribute, right? All of that is multiply, I mean divide, yes, whatever. <laughs> you get the idea, sorry, I'm confusing myself here. And then this is equal to i. Here's the critical part. To get i from here, the real part has to be 0. So this needs to be 0. If that's 0, then we kind of... I probably made a mistake somewhere because I, uh, I should be getting uh, a real value for a and b. Anyways, I said that this was not going to be complete, so I'm going to leave it like this. But looks like I made a mistake somewhere, so that's your job to find that too. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.